My name is Chuck Milliken, president of Shrinkfast. We're located in Newport, New Hampshire, and considered one of the leading manufacturers of propane-fired handheld heat tools. In today's presentation, we're going to discuss a couple of the models that you should consider when doing your shrink wrap project. We're going to discuss our 50,000 BTU model MZ, our 200,000 BTU model 998. We're going to go over all the kit contents that come with each one of our heat tools and the things that you should be looking for if you're considering another heat tool in the market, making sure that you understand the differences in the propane tanks that are out there and which is the right style for your particular heat tool. We'll talk about the importance of the regulator with the kit that you're considering and making sure it has the right safety features when you're plugging it into the propane tank. We'll discuss the safety features that are built into the hose. We'll install the hose to the regulator, regulator to the tank. And then finally, we'll actually go through all the safety features that should be built into any gun that you're considering for shrink wrap projects. We'll discuss the specific safety features in our model 998. And then we'll actually go through and also discuss the various PPE, personal protective equipment that you should be using to protect yourself for any shrink wrap project you're doing. We'll then fire off the 998 install our four foot extension and talk about the principles of the extension in use with the heat tool. And then finally, we're gonna do a live demonstration and shrink wrap a TransShield 7 mil boat cover using the Model 998. So the first thing that we're gonna actually talk about is the propane tank. It's very important that you use a vapor withdrawal propane tank, just like a barbecue grill. The difference between this and a liquid withdrawal propane tank, like you see with a fork truck, is in a liquid withdrawal, there's a steel stem that runs down to the bottom of the propane tank. And when you go to turn on your fork truck, it actually pulls liquid from the bottom of the propane tank, and that's what fuels the truck. That is not what you want to use for propane fired heat tools. In a barbecue grill style tank, the stent only goes down about a quarter of the way. And what happens is when you bring this to get filled at a, at a station, they only fill these tanks to about 80% capacity. The top 20% is left empty. And the reason is liquid propane will actually vaporize at any temperature warmer than minus 44 degrees Fahrenheit. So as soon as they put that liquid propane in here, that top 20% immediately vaporizes. And when you turn on your, your heat tool, you're pulling propane vapor from the tank to fuel the gun. If you use liquid withdrawal tanks, you're going to get liquid through the gun. It's going to clog it. You're going to get a very long orange type flame. It could be a very dangerous situation. So if they do mistakenly, and it happens a lot, use liquid withdrawal, you just tell them turn off the tank, purge the gas, you let the gun sit for a few hours, it'll eventually dry up, making sure blow compressed air through the front or back of the gun, and that should be, at that point, safe to use with a, a proper propane tank. You also will get a lot of questions. There's actually, all new propane tanks have two different style threads on it. There's an internal thread, and there's also an external thread. The external thread you'll find usually uh, used with uh, barbecue uh, barbecue grill style propane tanks where they use that hand wheel and they utilize the external threads. Those regulators on barbecue grill style, um, on barbecue grills, those are low pressure regulators. We utilize, and with the propane fired handheld tools, we use high pressure regulators. And so it's different in that the threads are on the POL and we utilize the inside threads of, of, of the tank. Everything is left-handed thread, so it's counterclockwise when it comes to gas, and that's how you install it. So you always get someone, to, eventually they'll ask, listen, I got my kit, I've got the regulator, it doesn't fit into the tank. They only see the external threads, tell them there's internal, and it'll work just fine. So that's the, the differences between the various tanks that are out there. So now that we've talked about the, the proper style propane tank that they want to use, let, let's talk about the regulator itself. The regulator that Shrinkfast uses is made by Marshall Excelsior out of Marshall, Michigan. And it consists of a couple of different components. Of course, you have the main housing, which regulates the pressure down. When you turn on a propane tank, you, a full tank, you could have upwards of 100 pounds plus of pressure coming out of that tank. 
we utilize these regulators to throttle down that pressure to our optimum performance of 22 psi and so that's the main housing that does the regulating or the pressure we have a gauge on here that's in bar and psi and we factory preset and test every regulator before it goes. Every regulator is leak tested before it goes into our kit to make sure that there aren't going to be any issues when this is tested live by the user. We factory preset every gauge at 22 psi. When you operate the model 998 at that pressure level you get 172,000 BTUs of power. This is the handle that adjusts the pressure. There, on the back side of the handle there's a hex nut that you can loosen and that will allow you to adjust the pressure. We do not recommend anybody adjust the pressure. The optimal performance is 22 psi. We do have some people who like to crank it up to 30, which is fine. You know, you're going to get close to 200,000 BTUs at 30 psi, um, but we don't recommend they do it, but they have that option if they want to. This is a very important safety feature that you should find in any regulator that you purchase with your style heat tool. This is called the POL and it, I think it stands for like Presto Light, which was the original manufacturer of the POL um, several decades ago, and they just never changed it. So it, the POL is what goes into the propane tank, and there's a very important safety feature inside this POL, and it's called an excess check valve. And what that means is if you've got your heat tool all set up and someone's shrink wrapping that hose, 25 foot of hose is extended across the floor, someone runs over it and cuts the hose. As I mentioned, you could have upwards of 100 pounds of pressure of propane coming out of that cut hose. And it's a very dangerous situation. But what the excess check valve does, it, incre it, it, de it detects sudden increases in pressure from the tank. The hose is cut, you get 100 pounds of pressure coming out. There is a spring and a plug mechanism in the excess check valve. It, it detects the sudden increase in pressure and it slams shut so that the gas coming out is temporarily stopped so it gives the user time to get to the tank and turn it off so it's important that the POL have an excess check valve in it for that very scenario so always make sure whatever regulator you're looking to purchase that you have that safety feature in there now what that does is um, it creates a sometimes a user uh, confusion when they first turn on the tank so if you have turning on this tank for the first time today when we go live, I'll turn on this tank and this needle will take about 10 seconds to go from 0 to 22 psi. Because if you think about it, every time you're turning on the tank, you're simulating a cut hose. All of that pressure is coming out, is being throttled down by the regulator. So what it does is every time you turn on the tank for the first time, excess check valve kicks, kicks in and it slowly releases the gas. It doesn't shut it off entirely or permanently, obviously you wouldn't be able to use the gun but it slows down the flow of gas until the 25 foot hose is fully pressurized with the gas. So what's happening is it goes from 0 to 22. When the gas is fully pressurized in the hose, you'll hear an audible click out of the regulator that tells you it's ready for operation. You get a lot of users who want to shrink wrap something really quickly. They'll turn on the tank. They don't allow the gauge to pressurize properly. They try to fire the gun. The needle will drop to 0 every time. You need to allow it to pressurize before you fire the gun. So that's the safety features that you should be looking for in any regulator that you get. I should also mention uh, that our regulators are UL approved. UL stands for Underwriters Laboratory. So if you look at the back of your refrigerator or your stove, you'll see that round UL symbol. Underwriters, Underwriters Laboratory is a very critical safety certification company out of Illinois. And they take handheld heat tools and they run them through a series of tests that make sure that the tool that's going into your user's hands is the safest it possibly can be. They have what they call a UL uh, Safety 147 certification manual. It's like 100 pages long. And all of these safety tests are what every one of our heat tools, regulator assemblies, and hose assemblies have to pass. Now what that means to you is... Uh, what you're getting with this kit is a UL approved regulator assembly by itself. The gun is UL approved by itself. The hose that we provide is UL approved by itself. They all go through their own series of tests. Then the entire kit is UL certified. And that's one of the reasons why Shrinkfast is considered the leader in safety because it's a very expensive and it's a very intensive uh, safety certification program.
Regarding the hose, same thing. It's uh, made by a leading manufacturer of uh, gas accessories, Fairview. Uh, it's uh, UL listed, also CSA, that's another safety board, 25 feet in length, also has uh, left-handed threads. The safety certification regarding hose is, is regarding a, a pull test. So our pull test will exceed 350 pounds of pressure before those fittings will actually come off. And if you think about it, you only have upwards of 30 pounds of pressure running from the regulator through the hose. So it's a very durable, very safe hose. So if you are looking for a hose to replace something like this, look for the safety certifications on there. Make sure you understand the pull test capability to ensure that you're getting the, the safest product you can use. Now we're going to talk about the, the heat tool itself. This is the model 998. Uh, again, everything's manufactured in our facility in Newport, New Hampshire. Everything's got the UL label on the bottom. We have serial numbers. So when we first started manufacturing this heat tool back in 1998, we have tracks, uh, tracking capability of every serial number and which distributor it went to and what month they bought it in. We have a cool to the touch combustor that we'll talk about uh, later on when we actually fire it off. The combustor comes off very easily and this allows us to put two foot, four foot or six foot extensions and simply pushing down the safety button, pulling off the combustor head. One of the safety features in addition to this being cool to the touch even during operation is inside this combustor is called a flame arrestor screen. And the reason why that's important is when you're firing off the gun and you release the trigger, you're cutting off the flow of propane. The propane wants to follow the source of the flame so it wants to actually come back down the gun, which could be a dangerous situation. So what we have installed is this flame arrester. It's a wire mesh screen. So when you release the trigger and cut off the flow of propane, that flame comes in, it hits that screen and it dissipates and it doesn't uh, create a problem. There are some situations where uh, people have removed the screen or they've uh, replaced the spark plug and they don't put the screen back in. And what will happen is if they use it with an extension, so they'll, they'll put the combustor on the extension, they'll fire off the gun and release the trigger. If there's no flame arrestor in there, you'll actually have the flame come down the tube and uh, it makes a, like a hollow sound and it ba will actually backfire out of the back of the gun. It's not a dangerous situation for the user, um, but it's disconcerting. So, <laughs> so, it, you always, if you, so if you are talking to someone and they're saying, listen, I'm firing a gun, I'm hearing the flame come back down the tube and it's backfiring. Uh, all they need to do is make sure they get that flame arrestor screen in there and that'll take care of that problem for them. We also have in the 998 a safety on the back so you have to have some dexterity in order to fire a gun so a child couldn't just pick it up and, and try to pull the trigger without depressing the safety. So you have to depress the safety first and pull the trigger. Now all propane fired heat tools use a piezo crystal ignition system just like a barbecue grill style tank. So on a barbecue grill, you push a button, it hits a piezo crystal, it creates voltage, goes to a spark plug, that's how you light your barbecue. Same exact uh, situation with, with our heat tools. Inside this gun, when you pull the trigger, it hammers a piezo crystal inside the trigger mechanism, it then sends voltage up an ignition wire, which goes to the front of the gun, comes in contact with the spark plug, and that's what gives you your spark. Now propane uh, ignites at 900 degrees. Uh, that's that's it, its ignition point. So one of the wear items in our heat tool or any heat tool like this is the piezo crystal ignition system. We say that you should be able to get anywhere from eight to 10,000 clicks for a trigger igniter before it starts wearing. So again, another symptom that you'll see out there with users is I've been using this gun for a while. It takes me four or five times to actually get the gun to ignite what's going on. Chances are the piezo crystal is several years old. It's starting to wear down. It's not creating enough voltage to ignite that spark plug to get the intensity, the 900 degrees um, that it requires to ignite the propane. So it's not a very difficult process to replace the trigger. We actually have on our website a how to rebuild a model 998 tutorial. It takes you step by step from taking it apart, replacing the trigger and putting everything back together again. 
So that's the, the basic principles of how the gun operates. So what I'm gonna do now is go through and install this really quickly. So I've gone through and I've set up the tank. Should be all set. And I know it's probably difficult to hear, but there was an audible click that came out of that regulator, and that, that means everything's pressurized. So again, it's depressing the safety. And then I, what I always like to do for the first time when the gun's cold, get a little gas flowing, and then fire the gun. Little gas fire the gun. And as we talked about earlier, one of the great safety features of shrink fast heat tools are the cool to the touch combustor. And again, six inches from the tip of the flame, it's 1100 degrees Fahrenheit. So when we now go and we're actually going to do the shrink wrapping, I always recommend you stay about six to eight inches away from the film. And the analogy that I like to use, it's almost like spray painting a house. If you're going to spray paint your house with a, a spray gun, you're not going to keep that gun on one location of the house for too long because the, the paint's going to run. It's the same premise here. So when you're hitting the, the film, you're actually constantly moving left to right, up and down, making sure that you're not putting too much heat on one area of that film. And we'll go over that again when we actually do the, the live demo. Um, always making sure when you go to start shrink wrapping, put your safety glasses on. Um, Kevlar sleeves are available. We have these from Shrinkfast. Welding gloves. This is a UL guard that it's more of a, it's a for new new users. They've never shrunk wrapped before. It's a great training tool. It installs on the combustor like this, and the cage allows the user to know exactly how far to keep the flame from the film. So if they're learning for the first time, you keep the tip of this gauge about two inches away from the film. That's the proper distance. Now, once people become familiar with it, they put the cage away, but it's a great learning tool for new users that are out there. So I'm going to purge this, and we're going to go over, and we're going to set up and, and do some live demos. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually start doing some shrink wrapping here. Uh, the important things to remember, again, when you fire off the 998, it's 1100 degrees Fahrenheit, six inches from the tip of the flame. And this is a TransShield 7 mil boat cover that we're going to actually shrink. And it's going to start changing properties, as I mentioned, at about 200, 215 degrees Fahrenheit. So when I'm hitting this film, I always like to come in an angle because one of the things you have to be very much aware of is that velocity of that flame coming off of this combustor. So it's over 100 miles an hour. And so if you get directly in front of what you're shrink wrapping like this, you're going to get the heat hitting and blowing right back in your face. So you always want to shrink wrap at an angle, always on the side so that the flame is deflecting away from you. I never shrink wrap going backwards because you just never know what's going to be behind you. So you always start and move forward, always walking ahead. I like to hold the hose so I'm not tripping over that. So those are the couple of the things that I always do when I'm shrink wrapping. I like to start at the bottom, do the complete perimeter of the boat first, make sure the entire belly band, uh, perimeter band is done, and then I start in one section and work my way until I can't reach 
uh, the top, and then I use one of the extensions to complete the, the, the project. So I'm going to turn on the, the tank, wait till it pressurizes. I heard the click, make sure we can get a little gas and there's no issues with the gun. Everything seems to be operating correctly. And I'm going to keep this about six to eight inches. And I'm going to just watch the film change its properties and slowly move back and forth. So we've gone through and we've used the 998 and shown you how to shrink wrap uh, the boat. And what we're going to do now is we're going to install, as I mentioned earlier, Shrinkfast has three different styles of extensions. Uh, we have a two foot, this is our four foot extension, we also have a six foot. And installation is very straightforward. It's simply pushing down the button on top of the combustor, pulling the head off, and then taking one end of the combustor, putting it on the end of the gun, you hear it snap in place and then now you have the extension installed with no tools necessary. We're going to turn on the propane tank. Now one thing you got to keep in mind is when you're firing the gun by itself obviously the gas only has to go a short distance before it's coming out of the combustor. Now you're increasing the length the gas has to travel by four feet. So what I always like to do especially when I'm starting this for the first time is I like to depress the safety and pull the trigger, get some gas flow, and then I ignite the gun and it should ignite every time. And the way this is working is there is a spring in the body of the gun that comes in, comes in contact with a brass nut. And then there's ignition wire that runs down the full length of the extension and comes in contact with another uh, spring which then the butt end of the spark plug in the flame holder rests inside that spring. So when I pull the piezo crystal on this end, it sends the voltage, voltage down the ignition wire to the spark plug. And this is one thing you will get occasionally, especially when the guns become several years old. The customer will use the gun by itself and everything will work just fine. Then they put a four foot air extension on and they can't get the gun to ignite. If the gun in the igniter system is several years old, you're probably not getting enough voltage out of the piezo crystal in order to get that 900 degrees that you need to, in order to ignite the, the um, propane. So the fix there would be to replace the trigger igniter system. But again, depress the safety, pull the trigger. And finally, very important that the flame arrestor screen that we talked about, the wire mesh screen is wrapped around that spark plug. Make sure there aren't any uh, sometimes they pull them out to replace the spark plug. The screen can get bent. No flame can get around that the, uh, the screen itself. Otherwise, you get that hollow sound coming down the tube. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go and wrap the rest of this boat with the extension. So we're going to, uh, again, different ways that you can position. This is the standard way a lot of people use it. If you're doing a flat surface like this, you want to make sure you're getting the, the most width of the flame. So I'll actually adjust the combustor head. 